for the third part of the three-part series on integration of rational functions. Just as a review, remember we learned how to integrate using um, long division. Then we jumped over to how to integrate rational functions with factoring and simplifying. And today we are going to get to the last one, which is factoring with completing the square. Okay. So before we can evaluate integrals by completing the square, we need to remember how to complete the square. This would have been a skill that you would have learned in geometry when you were learning about circles. Um, I know that Mr. Lino taught it to you guys, <coughs> excuse me, because there was a lot of completing the square on the park test when you guys were in geometry. Um, and he was kind of a fanatic about it. So whether you remember how to do it or not, it's a totally different thing. Um, I actually teach it in my Algebra 1 classes at the very, very end of the year. Um, so I'm going to see if I can remind you of how to do it. Um, first thing I want to say is that everything, other than factoring, everything that we do on this page, you will not have to do on the AP exam. Okay. Um, but in order for you to understand completing the square, we need to go, kind of go through this so that you have a clue of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor x squared plus 6x plus 9. So hopefully you are able to do that. That factors into x plus 3 times x plus 3. It's really annoying that that jumps around like that, and I apologize. Um, you can shorten this up to x plus 3 squared. Right? It's binomial squared. Suppose this is the problem that we want to do on the AP exam. Okay, well, first of all, this is not a rational function. It doesn't have a numerator and a denominator. But this could be a problem that they that they give you. Um, I don't think that they will give you this because it requires you to do all this, and I've never seen them do that. Um, but this could be in the denominator of a uh, of an integral, and you would have to go through this process. Okay, so u substitution is not immediately clear or effective on this integral. So let's think about it. If we did u substitution, we get x squared plus 6x plus 9. So du is equal to 2x plus 6. Well, this would become u to the 1 half. And I don't have any, oops, I forgot my dx. And I don't have any of this stuff hanging out on the outside. So u substitution... U substitution is not, if I need my parentheses, is not effective on this integral. So we need to try it a different way. So if we rewrite it, we can rewrite the integral of the square root as the integral of the square root of x plus 3 squared, because remember, these things are equal. We did it up here, right? There's no linkage errors here. This is equal to this, and this is equal to this. So I can make this substitution here. When you square root, remember it's asking for the positive root, the principal root. So this is the same thing as the integral of the absolute value of x plus 3, which you don't, we've never done. But if you think about this, the absolute value of x is equal to negative x if x is less than 0, and is equal to positive x if x is greater than 0. You just take what's inside and make it negative for negative values, and take what's inside and keep it positive for positive values. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to split this up into a piecewise function. Negative x plus 3, which if you distribute the negative, you get negative x minus 3 for x values less than negative 3, and positive x plus 3 for x values greater than or equal to negative 3. And then you can integrate each piece. Negative 1 half x squared minus 3x plus c. Positive 1 half x squared plus 3x plus c. I actually went and graphed all of this nonsense in Desmos. Here's the original function that we were trying to integrate. Here's the two integrals that we got, and then the derivative of each of those two integrals, and it matches up. The dotted lines match up over top of the original uh, function. So the meaning behind all of this, that was all four and a half minutes of a lot of nonsense, not nonsense, but we learned that having a perfect square binomial, x plus 3 squared, was definitely useful in evaluating this integral. Otherwise, we would not have been able to do it. Okay, So, let's talk about this. Let's try to factor this one. x squared plus 10x plus 41. Well, two numbers that multiply to 41 and add to 10. Well, 41 is prime. So, its only factors are 1 and 41, and they certainly don't add to 10. So, we can't factor it. 
This is where completing a square comes in. So, <laughs> inserts Algebra 1 review of completing a square here. I actually grabbed this right from my Algebra 1 um, uh, notes that I do every year with my Algebra 1 kids and plopped it right into this. So I'm going to work this example first and then we'll do this example second. So step one is to convert ax squared plus bx equals c. So we have to convert it to this form. In other words, I can't have the constant here. I've got to move the c value over to the other side. So that's going to give me x squared minus 6x is equal to negative 4. Okay. If a is not equal to 1, we have to divide every term by a. Well, in this case, a is equal to 1, so everything just stays the same. All right, we get negative 4. The next thing we want to do is we want to take our b term. Oh, hang on a second. Sorry about that. I got interrupted. Okay, so we want to take our b term and divide it by 2. So our b term is negative 6. I'm going to take negative 6, divide it by 2. Actually, I should probably do this up in the corner. Hang on a second. I want to give myself some room here. Negative 6 divided by 2, and then I want to square it. So that actually equals negative 3 squared. And I'm not going to make that 9 just yet. Okay, I need to add it to both sides. So let's think about this here. x squared minus 6x plus negative 3 squared equals negative 4 plus negative 3 squared. I have to add it to both sides to keep the equation balanced. Okay, now here's why I did not actually make that a 9. We can factor this thing. This thing factors into a perfect square binomial. Whatever this number is in the parentheses here. If this was a plus 3, I would, I would write plus 3 here. If this was minus 2, I'd write minus 2 here. If this was minus 1 half, I'd write minus 1 half here. So this is a minus 3. Now I want you to think about this here for a second. It's worth this. Minus, x minus 3 squared means x minus 3 times x minus 3 which if you FOIL it out gives you x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9, which is x squared minus 6x plus 9, which is what this is equal to, x squared minus 6x plus 9. Okay? So this is just an easy way of factoring it, so we don't have to actually go through the steps of factoring. And on the other side, I'm actually going to do that math. Negative 4 plus 9 is 5. Now, if you were in Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 and you were using completing the square to solve it, you would square root both sides. You would get x minus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 5, and then you would add 3, and you would have your x-intercepts. Okay? But we don't have to do that for this, for um, calculus. Okay, so let's go do this problem now. I'm going to switch to with my red. I like my red. Okay. So, again, I'm going to start off by moving the constant term over. So I get 2x squared plus 8x is equal to 16. All right, 6 plus 10 is 16. If a is not equal to 1, divide every term by a. So I'm going to divide everything by 2. So that gives me x squared plus 4x is equal to 8. Next, I'm going to take half of b and square it. So b is 4. So 4 divided by 2 squared which is positive 2 squared. Remember, I'm not actually going to calculate it. So this gives me x squared plus 4x. Now I'm going to add this to both sides. 2 squared, 8 plus 2 squared. And then this factors. x plus 2, so that's a positive 2 in the parentheses, squared equals 8 plus 4, which is 12. Okay? That's the main gist of completing the square that you need for right now. Don't forget, to complete the square, the coefficient of x squared must be 1. If it isn't, you must factor out the leading coefficient first and then complete the square. Okay, so it's going to get interesting with integrals because there's no equal sign in an integral. So how do you add that half of b squared term to both sides? So that's what we're going to talk about in the next video.